Good evening, councils, senior leadership team, and residents of the town. See that we have quorum, so I call this special committee of the whole meeting for uh, October 28th to session. And um, we have a motion put forward by Councillor Core, adoption of agenda, that the agenda for October 28th, 2019 special meeting of committee be adopted as circulated. Any discussion? If not, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? All against? Motion carries. At this time, after viewing the agenda, I have to ask all councillors if they have a pecuniary interest in general nature thereof to declare. Not seeing any, I ask the clerk to please note that. Uh, so the first item on oh, the agenda. Oh, I see. Uh, so then the first item on the agenda, ver verbal update of the ICIP Community Culture and Recreation Stream Grant. And I believe that will be by our Treasurer, Director of Treasury, is uh, Teresa, Ms. Quinlan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to be here today to give you an update on what's happening with the application for the uh, the cultural the community culture recreation stream grant. <coughs> uh, the first one we have is with regards to the library. As you know, um, we are looking at um, possibly moving the library to the community center. So one of the things that we did do is we called Petrov, which are the architects for the community center, uh, to look at the feasibility of actually doing that, and uh, they came back with three conceptual designs, like just. Um, just drawings to say yes that's something that we definitely can do uh, we were looking at roughly 14,000 square feet and the facilities on the north end can accommodate that so uh, looking at that and then you know doing some cost estimates with regards to the uh, furniture equipment and also the IT. We're looking at some of the self-serve IT that's available for libraries that will help to cut back on staff costing. And also we're looking at this grant at putting in parking. So right now we've got about a million dollars worth of parking in this grant. So when we do the calculations, uh, we also had uh, Collier's provide us with an assessment of what the value is for the current library. Uh, if we were, when we were, when we sell it, and it's approximately two million dollars. So the strategy here is to um, to come up with a number that the town's portion, which is twenty six point six seven percent, is offset by the sale of the um, the library, so that you know it's almost cost neutral to the town. So that's the strategy. And so looking at that. Um, with you know 14,000 square feet and approximately $400 a square foot that's 5.6 million dollars for the actual construction uh, FF and E uh, that's furniture equipment and IT is approximately um, 800,000 we're bumping it up to a million just to give us some a contingency and parking we're looking at part four all of part four for parking and that's approximately 800,000. We bumped it up to a million. So that totals 7.6 million. We are looking at bumping up the full amount to $8 million because it gives us a bit of a buffer. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns here. And then the town's portion of that will be 2.1 million, 2 million, 133,000. So about 133,000 would be the town's portion of all of this, of, of approximately an $8 million addition to the town. And we think that that's a reasonable amount. Um, just, I don't, yeah, so that's the first one. So I don't know if there are any questions on that. Uh, we also have been working with the Utility Sustainability Committee with Bob and Gord. So they've been part of the design, looking at the designs, asking the questions, helping us with you know, getting the numbers on the IT side. So, I don't know, Bob, if you wanted to say anything. Yep, Councilor. Through you, Mr. Mayor. It's been a real exciting process that we've been going through uh, because we've been able to include the, in the budget a lot of items that would help us with the original MCC as well. And I think if we're successful, we believe we can be successful with this application, 
it would be a great, great tool. Because we, go, we have to remember, the uh, library board came up with an estimate of half a million dollars or so, which, which I believe is low for the existing building renovations that would have to be done in the next five years, or by 2025. Yeah. And I think we're, we're far better off selling that building. And I think Taylor's estimate is quite low from the interest I've received from people calling me on that existing building. So I think there's a, a great potential to get more money there, and this will be a cost neut neutral. And in the end, it will be a positive cash savings because they'll be working with culture and recreation. We can combine staff. We can have a one, one shop stop for everyone in town with regards to people coming to the library, the senior center, and it is actually then a cultural center for our community. So I think it's a, it's a great proposal. I think uh, if we don't agree to proceed with uh, this grant application, I think it would be a mistake on our, our part. Thank you. Any other questions on the presentation so far or comments? Uh, Councilor Cho. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, approximately how many parking spots are included for $800,000? Well, this is all right now of, of uh, parcel four, which, oh, yeah, director. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, you'll recall back in April when we did a report to council, we had preliminary sketches of parking layout in, on that part, and it was uh, in the order of 190 spaces. 190? Yes. And through you, Mr. Mayor, the next one. Um, so you're saying the cost to the town could be 133,000. So you're saying the sale of the current library is approximately two million. That's that's just uh, an approximation. Yes, from the colliers. Yes. Thank you. Councilor Clark. Yes, to you, Mr. Mayor. When you talked about computerizing the library, what do you mean by that? And and what? How many, how many jobs are we going to eliminate or how many jobs are, are, are well, we looking at things, saving? Yeah, I think one of the thing, things we're looking at is uh, extension of hours. So right now, library is limited in hours. Um, this is also for the Fenwick Library as well. Uh, so it becomes self-serve. Someone would come and they would scan their books or they drop their books off. So there's a whole system with regards to that. Uh, so I think this will enable us to extend the hours of the library without increasing costs and potentially you know maybe decreasing some costs uh, especially if we co-locate the library at the community center there's a lot of you know seniors there that might want to volunteer at the library and then maybe we can potentially have some savings there with that so through you mr mayor where, is there a technology out there now oh, yes. and who's oh, yeah. using there's, it? there are libraries right now there's one in hamilton that is fully uh it's all automated and it's actually a self-serve library for a rural library like fenwick uh, you can actually go in on your own, scan in, come out, do everything without someone being there. There are libraries like that. And then the nice thing about that is that, you know, it's 24 7. Uh, Councilor Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to mention it. it's in the ha Hamilton area. The library board has it. They actually have two libraries that are like that right now. And uh, it's. It's an amazing technology. Even the St. Catharines Library has a portion of this now mm -hmm. where they have these, basically all the books are tagged. So you don't, you don't even, have, it's almost like a Nexus card. You know how your Nexus card, you stack them all? You, don't, you just go and put them there. You put the books on this desk, it scans them all, it processes them all against your card, and uh, away you go. Uh, they also have kiosks for your books, so if you pre-ordered a book or ordered a book that can go into a locker and it's your locker and it, no, there, has, there doesn't have to be staff involvement with regards to the processing of the individual picking up the big books or checking the books out or checking the books in. It's an amazing system. And so, um, so the cost uh, of that has been oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. The cost of all that has been incorporated in this grant. Yes, so we we have to be mindful. Uh, it's going to cost one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for us to uh, for the town's money to go in into uh, the new building. However, don't forget the existing building. We're being asked to put in five hundred thousand dollars worth of improvement to it. So 
the 130 is a huge save for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, this is a question for Councilor Hilbert. When you say that there is uh, money included in there for upgrades of the MCC or will help with the upgrades of the MCC, what would be an example of that? Well, one of the things is we've uh, included in there cool view glass uh, film, which uh, is almost like your photo grade gra glasses. What happens then, it, it's allowed to take the glare and the sunshine has come pouring into the building right now and take care of that problem. The other thing we want to upgrade is our total BAS system, our, boiler ma our building management system, you know, the automated system that we use to get it more, more in tune. So that, that's just a couple of the things we want to incorporate there. So that's under the 5.6 for the library? Yes. No, that's not uh, the library. That's no? the recreation. I'll, I'll get to those two. Okay. So it's not part of the library. It's part. Of the, there's three grant submissions that are going to happen. One is the library. <coughs> we're going to have one for the pool, because when we added all of the costs up, we were about 7.4 million dollars, and we're only allowed five million dollars per application. So for each separate submission, so the pool is about 2.4 million dollars, and we feel that that is a substantial uh, amount to have its own separate allocation. So the pool will be 2.4, and then recreation, all the other things, including the MCC, is about $5 million. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, almost $15 million with three submissions. And don't forget, we're looking at things that are currently in the capital plan. We have eight years to spend this money. So whatever we get, even though the town has to pay 27% of it, we are getting the 73% that currently we don't have in our 10-year plan. So it's, it's just a huge opportunity. Councilor Stewart. Yeah, um, it's not a question, but uh, further with um, the library, if we do build the, the new building, it'll operate much more efficiently with the lower cost lighting and more efficient heating and everything. So even though we're going to end up spending, say, $130,000, $150,000 on it, we'll get that back in what we'll be saving yes. on the utilities in the old building. Yeah, that's correct. Through you, Ms. Mayor, last question here for the library. How much approximately do you think that we would save on wages alone by going with this system? I can't answer that, you know, to be fair. I mean, I think part of the strategy, my understanding is that right now the hours of the library are getting less. And I think, you know, if we're at the community center, we would want decent hours for the library to be open. So I think this will provide us the opportunity to have longer extended hours, probably, you know, hopefully matching at least something with what we have at the community center. So I don't think there might be savings, but there'll be the opportunity that you can actually add more service. So add more service at the same cost. At the same cost. And that's what we're paying say, now. Right, and the savings would come at the Fenwick Library because that would be self-serve. That's where the savings would come. Any other questions so far? And uh, yeah. continue so on. So as I you? mentioned, uh, the other two uh, grants, like $5 million would be all the recreation, all of the, um, that we that we talked about, the, the um, soccer field, Centennial Park, um, Harold Black Park, and also the addition here to this facility for the washrooms out here when we have our special events to this building. So that's all included in here for special events. And that is approximately $5 million, and that includes, you know, the generator for the MCC, um, ice cover, we got an ice cover for the, um, the MCC, and... Um, and also a covering for the gym and some cameras. So by putting the generator in the MCC, now it becomes um, an emergency operating center. And also it could be the town's evacuation center, which we don't have. So it could be designated as that once we have the generator. So it'll, it'll serve as another purpose, the MCC. Yeah, so I just, um, we're gonna be submitting the grant tomorrow it's due on the 12th, we're ready to go. <laughs> and so we just want to just make sure that council's in agreement with what we have. And um, we're pretty excited about it. Great. Sweet. 
I, I know you've put a lot of, you and your crew have put a lot of work into this in the last uh, week to 10 days, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, it'd be uh, interesting and exciting to see uh, uh, if it does, does bear fruitation. Wow, uh, exciting times. Okay, thank you. Sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. For the five million for the soccer fields at Centennial and Harold Black, what would be an example? What would be an upgrade for that? Okay, so we have, for example, lighting. There's about um, one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars of lighting on, you know, one of the diamonds. One hundred forty-five thousand dollars lighting on another diamond. There's the um, field construction, Centennial Park South soccer field construction is two hundred fifty thousand. Splash pads, there's two splash pads, one at Centennial Park and one will be where the swimming pool is. That's uh, another splash pad. And they're about $350,000 each for a splash pad. And that's something that we've heard many years for people asking for a splash pad. So one of the exciting things. So anywhere that we had anything to do with the recreation, <coughs> um, the parks, the facilities in the parks that are on the list, they're all on here. And also includes some playground equipment renewal. So if we have playground equipment renewal in the next 10 years, they're in here. They have a lifespan as well. Great. Thank you for the presentation. Then I guess, uh, yeah. Great. Thank you. We have a uh, motion put forward by um, <coughs> Mike Trophy. The committee received the verbal update from Teresa Quinlan, Director of Corporate Services and Treasurer, regarding the ICIP Community Culture and Recreation Stream Grant. Any further comments on this? Not seeing any, call the vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Operating in water in wastewater budgets. Oh, oh, this, oh proposed 2020 municipal grant application allocations 2019-0118 uh, recreation 2019-0118 recreation. Motion put forward by Councillor Hildebrand. The committee received report number 2019-118 and recommend to Council that Council approve the 2020 grant allocations of $17,008, waived facility fees, 7,900 cash allocations, and $14,585 estimated, estimated in-kind labor request as outlined in the 2020 Municipal Allocations Summary. Any discussions on this? Councillor Carr. Yes, in that inclined labor request, is that overtime or regular time? No? Stream, stream, Mr. Mayor, it would depend on when the event is and how the staff is scheduled. And through you, Mr. Mayor, if, if the event happened on Saturday, would we not give them uh, a Monday off or a Tuesday off, an extra day? not work them over 39 hours? Okay, yeah, so through you, Mr. Mayor, right now, um, staff are accumulating time in lieu, so they will take that time off in another time when, when they need it. So it is time in lieu and not paid out. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the uh, question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carried. Um, where are we? 5.2 then. Oh. Water okay. Motion put forward by Councillor Wink. The committee received report number 
2020-0116 Corporate Services and recommend to Council that Council adopt the 2020 Water and Wastewater Budgets. Discussion on these items. Um, there, oh. I, I yeah, do you want me to do a presentation first? Oh. Yeah. yeah, there's a water and wastewater oh, presentation. Okay. Oh, okay, excellent. Oh, so, excellent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, tonight I'm presenting the 2020 operating budget and the water and wastewater budget. As you recall, these are two separate budgets. One, the operating budget is funded through a tax levy increase and the water and wastewater budget is funded through user fees. So they're two separate budgets. Okay, so. So the agenda for tonight, uh, we have the operating budget and we're gonna go through the operating revenues, expenditures, the tax levy proposed increase, the Meridian Community Center and transit, and then we will look at the water wastewater budget. So the 2020 operating revenues, uh, I always find it a little bit easier to look at numbers in a graph. And so what you have here are the operating re revenues. And as you can see here, 81.6% of all our revenues for the operating budget is coming through the tax levy. And then the other portions are uh, coming through the uh, individual departments, but that's where the majority of our revenue is coming from. The major revenues, these are the breakdown of other non-taxation revenues, and, uh, and you'll see there that uh, we've got 21% um, of that is coming from the facilities rental fees. Uh, we've got some interest, um, supplemental. Um, so these are the breakdowns. It just shows you where the money is coming from from the different areas that we have. But this is this is that less than 19% of the total revenue is this pie broken out. So this is the major revenues, which we just showed you in the pie format. And uh, if you look at you know what's causing some of the major uh, variances from last year's budget, uh, the building permit fees are going up by $100,000. And um, building permits don't have an impact on the tax levy because whatever we receive if it's over or under it goes into the reserve it's a balanced budget so we don't we can't dip into that uh the biggest number here that has a change is the transfer from the mcc reserve so as you recall in 2019 we had four hundred and twenty five thousand five hundred dollars that was transferred from the reserve to help offset the cost of the first year of the community center and uh, this year we were able to allocate $100,000. So we've gone down to $325,000 from that reserve transfer. That was supposed to be a one-time reserve last year, this transfer, but we were able to um, allocate another $100,000 this year. Um, that's most mainly due to that grant that we received for the, the, the community center and we put that grant money into the reserve and now we're using it for 2020 to help offset the cost. So that's what we have there. If there are any questions throughout my presentation, it's, it's you know, just put your hand up. Operating expenditures. So this one here, so if you look at this budget, this is done by department and the largest department that we have here is transportation services, which is our public works department. Almost 51% of the budget is to support the public works. And, um, and then you see the other uh, areas as well. Uh, protection services is our fire services. And, um, and the other ones are more of the administrative side. And then recreation and cultural services also has uh, revenues on the other side to help offset some of the expenses. <coughs> Gosh, excuse me. Of the major expenses, uh, we broke it down even further here, and this is where you can see um, of that, you know, 33% of the total expenses uh, pertain to wages and benefits are, you know, 8.7%, and 21% you know, are transfers to reserves, and that uh, is money that's transferred for capital. So that's what the transfer to reserves are for. And then there's the debt of 10%, and those are the big two items. Yeah. 
Yeah, through you, Mr. Oh. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the uh, treasurer. Uh, I notice in page four, table B, which details the benefits. You said there was an increased cost and benefits, and can you tell me? How our burden rate compares with other municipalities in the region of Niagara? Yeah, so through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we did an analysis of all the municipalities in the region, and the information was obtained from the financial information return, which is public to everyone. This is the information we submit to the ministry. And uh, we are actually tied for the lowest. So Pelham and Lincoln are at uh, 23%. And they go as high as 48.9%, which is Grimsby. So the other ones are at 30%, 30, 29, 28, 28, 27. So we are at the lowest right now, our benefits. Thank you. That's, that that's based, amazing. And that I'm was impressed. based on, uh, this is based on the 2018 financial information, return information. Right. That's very good. Thank you. Okay. So we went through that. And then this is... Um, this is the summary of the major expenditures and the increases. So with regards to the wages, uh, the increase in the wages, um, we have some new compliments that we brought to council before and also there's uh, the merit increase that we have there as well. And so there's the COLA and merit equity increase and some new staffing in there. Uh, the benefits, there's a slight uh, increase, but we're still at the lower end of the other municipalities. The transfer to reserves, this is where we talked about it at the capital meeting, at the capital budget, that this is the increase that was required to the reserves to help the reserves um, fund the capital project. So that's 446000 Debt is up by 181,000, so that's the four million dollars of debt that was taken out in 2019. That we are now funding the full year amount. The great number on here that we need to celebrate is the utilities going down a hundred and almost 156,000, and that's from the great work that's done from the Utility Sustainability Committee. And so that's a wonderful number. Yes, we can clap, Councilor Ford. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's shows you what happens, you know, in good focus. Uh, Councilor Hildebrand has a... Yeah, through you. On, on the library budget, um, I got some quick facts. These, this is a library report, and I know I've asked you to take a look at it because I have, I'm having a hard time balancing the numbers that the library reports versus the numbers that are there. And, and I'm not asking you to do that tonight because I know that... It takes a while, and we only talked this morning about going over that. But one of one of the things I noticed on the financial report that the library issues is I, I don't see that it's done by a CPA or a CA or anybody like that. And I'm not sure whether they have to be, but it just seems unusual that they're issuing a public document to the <coughs> residents stating all those numbers. And w one of the other things I find a little unusual and maybe that's just the way revenues reported but they're they're calling the revenue for instance in this report is 814 218 but it excludes all the costs covered by the town and they don't put any note with regards to that in their report so to me this report doesn't quite accurately reflect a financial report that I'm used to seeing now I understand people report things differently than I'm used to seeing things but that's, that's, that number is not an all-inclusive number because that number is far higher than that, in my view. So that's just a general comment I have with, re with regards to that part of the library. But I have other comments as well. Right. So with regards to the in-kind contributions that the town makes on behalf of the library, you're right, it is not disclosed um, we have a whole list of things that the library, that the town does on behalf of the library that is not part of their expenses. The town absorbs them. And I don't know if you want me to share what, what the town does. Yeah, I, I think it would be good for you to share what the town does. Yeah, so with regards to all the maintenance and the facilities, the town does that. The grounds, the grass cutting, the snow removal is done, is done by the town and charged to the town. Uh, all the administrative services, you know, accounting, payroll, procurement, reporting, year-end audit, accounts payable, cashiering, insurance, 
Uh, the charitable returns are done by the town and um, the financial statements are consolidated with the town. So those and any working paper for the library trust. So those are all the services that the town does on behalf of the library to support the library. Right. I think that's valuable for people to realize that, that, that the cost is actually, or the revenue that the library reports is larger than what we report. And I think that should be noted when they issue a financial statement there that it's when they do that kind of thing, that, that should be an item that they put on their report that they issue to the public. And I'm not sure, is, are, you, are we proceeding down because I have other items with regards to library budgets? Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Sure. To with the library, did we not pick up the janitorial? Uh, no, they pay for their own janitorial. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought we picked that up. Or we yeah, no, they do. So the inside of the building is theirs, and then we do the outside, but then we do the maintenance as well. But then the maintenance needs to be done. Did you have any more? On, on the library, I'm not sure. Are we going to go over yeah, the ahead. request yeah. and all that? Um, obvi obviously, we know that uh, last year we didn't give the library board any increase in subsequent years. Uh, I like to always go back and pass practice to see what other communities do with their libraries. And uh, since I was investigating the Hamilton Library because they seem to be very progressive, and they initiated those two libraries, which basically are self-serve libraries and have the latest technologies, I took a look at their books. And based, basically in the year 2016, they got zero. In the two subsequent years, the board increased them by 2%. 17 and 18 and it looks as though right now I'm not sure where they're going to settle out But they recommended 1.5 for this coming year So it looks like council gave them direction as to where they want to go And I, I understand that the library boards asking us for a retroactive increase of almost 7% 7 to 8% and I, I guess I'm not in favor of that that kind of an increase because everyone around this horseshoe got the same last last year It was zero and I don't think it's fair to our staff for us to give a staff increase, and I know there's things other than staff increases to the library board when everyone sitting in here got the same amount. And I, I'm not concerned about my zero, but I don't think it's fair to senior staff to get the zero then either. I mean, I'm waiting for your direction on what you want to do with that line item. Like right now, we just rolled up what was given to us. No. And so what was given to us was 7.7% increase. Well, and, I'm, I'm, and you know, the library came here and, um, and came and talked to, to council about what the, their needs were. Well, I'm not, I'm not prepared to support a 7.7% increase for the library. That's, that's, that's my position. And that equals about $63,000. That's what that's equal to in that increase. I, I, so what are you prepared to to recommend? I'm not sure. Obviously, 2% is one of the things that our CAO mentioned as across the board coming to all the rest of the staff. I, I think that's only fair for the library to get at least 2%. But I realize there's other things including that number, so I don't know what the exact number should be. So I can't say what that number should be, but I know that with regards to salaries and wages and benefits and that, it should be exactly the same unless our CAO has a comment with regards to that. Council really has uh, three choices before it. Um, I've heard from two of your members. Um, you can continue to discuss and debate uh, you can simply accept and carry on to the next accept as proposed that's an option you can flat outright propose a different amount you have that power you could refer the item back to the board and ask them to return uh, we're here in late October we're scheduled remind me madam but we're scheduled to pass the budget in the first week of December, is that true? Yeah, it's late November, early December. Yeah. Yes, December. So you, you could ask them to return with 
them determining where they might like to make modifications within a certain amount. Uh, so essentially you can, you can make decisions yourself or you can refer it back. Uh, most people enjoy having some control over their own destiny, even if they don't control the exact amount. Um, but of course, uh, Hugh has the gold makes the rules. So you have a couple of options available to you at this time. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I would, I, I agree with you that it's good to give people a choice to review their own budget and to go back and take a look at it. And I think with regards to my comments, that's what I'd like to request the library board to do, is to go back and revisit their request. Because at this point, I'm not prepared to accept a 7 to 8 percent increase from the library board. So is there a target? That, that would be a good what thing to discuss. Council Clark, I agree with my colleague. Uh, a 2.2 would be adequate. Now, with the 877,000, what what is the percentage of that? You know, we pay a lot. What is that in wage? 80 percent, 90 percent? Charlotte has that. The deputy uh, treasurer has that detail. Um. I'll have to do the calculation to get the uh, sorry through your Mr. Mayor. Um, I would have to calculate to get the percentage. Part of the item to keep in mind, though, is that that number, the 877,000, is not the total expense of the library. It's the town's contribution to the library after they've received grants, development charges, programming revenues, all their other revenues. So you take all their expenses which in their budget totals 1.024 million subtract their other sources of revenue and the difference is the 877,000. So I could give you their um, staffing costs as a percentage of their total expenses if you give me a minute but just um, making sure like you're aware that. their total expense is not 877,000. I believe what 2.2 would probably be in the right ballpark if we could send that back to the library board and say could you get their numbers down to a 2.29 or 2.2. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Mayor, looking at the library of report themselves, uh, for 2018, to Councillor Kaur's question, salaries, wages, and benefits were $764,807. That, that was in 2018. So based on their 2020 draft budget, their staffing costs total 761,614. Their total expenditures are 1.024714, and so that's approximately 74 percent. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Wink. Yes. Yeah, so I don't think we can look at just the wages in isolation because there's other increased costs. Um, the library got hit with the exchange book exchange program that that they they got that funding taken away so you just can't look at wages in isolation there's other things that the library is bringing forward that needs to be included in that to in whatever number it is so I I understand what you're saying that we sh we could take a look at it, but to strictly go at 2.2 just because of wages is not the way to go. Okay. Any comment? Yes, Mike Cope. Yeah, through, you, council, through you, Mr. Mayor. I think we need to put this back to the library board themselves to see what they can come up with. Uh, with a budget that would not affect uh, ours as well, like it did last year. Okay. Any more comment on that? Um, so, <coughs> do we have to um, do a direction on that or a motion? Yeah, I would like a motion on that so that I have it in the record. Okay. Oh, I would Sierra strongly encourage you to provide some clarity, mm -hmm. either a, a, a a finite, an, out, an absolute dar dollar target or a percentage target and some sort of guidance because you're, you're notionally saying we'd like it to be less but some sort of order of magnitude some I, I say this I, 
I don't have authority to speak on behalf of the library CEO or the library. I can just envision if this was us, we'd want some idea and we'd go back to our table and as a group we'd attempt to find what that, whatever that, the best plan mm -hmm. forward in whatever the envelope was. And I can only assume reasonably that that's uh, how that organization would like to proceed. So, because they can come back with 5.5 or 2.0 or whatever the number is, uh, but they really ought to have some sort of guidance for what might be an acceptable range, or, a ra or, 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 or what the, what could be done with maintaining the same hours of operate, that's a good caveat, but you, you should deliver some clarity because it's a very difficult exercise you're about to uh, require them to go through in a very short period of time. Comments on that, Council Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. I, I realize the comment with regards to the two or two point two percent, but possibly um, there, I would be prepared to go to three and a half percent as a recommendation as to where where they uh, should be targeting to have come back with a report. Okay. Uh, any, I agree with the okay, there at the same number. Yeah. same number. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. If we aim for the two to three and a half percent, but I would like to ensure that the library board can do this without affecting hours for a second year in a row. That range, which I think, which I hope can be accomplished. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, what happens when they go through the assessment and say it can't be done without affecting hours? Through you, uh, one, one of the things that's exciting about libraries is what Hamilton has done with technology. And but we, we're not we, there yet. But assuming we get the grants, the total cost of instituting technology is $200,000. And that solved Hamilton's problems with regards to being able to have total access to some libraries. They went from 16 hours to almost unlimited hours to these libraries just through technology, spending that kind of money on a branch. So it's not an absorbent amount. We're going to know by February whether we get the grant or not. So to me, that's the answer to staffing and, and a lot of our issues. Because the first step is what St. Catharines has done. St. Catharines, as far as I know, I haven't been there, but this is the report we got back from St. Catharines is they, they instituted the, I think it's the RDF program, which, which takes care of the check-in, check-out, and that process at the library. So basically it's tagging the books and allowing the self-checkout and self-check-in. I'm not sure that that's an answer. But, but that's you're making an assumption that we're getting the grant. We don't have that grant yet. So um, to say that we're going to go to this system right away you know, we're, we're not spending, we've got eight years to spend the money, you know, so it, it doesn't mean that we're going to have it February, March, April to, to implement this, this type of program. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Council Carter, you're Mr. Talking about that is scheduling. Scheduling, you're looking at 74 percent of the cost of labor, and if we're if we're looking at, I don't know what their total labor per week is. Um, as a businessman, that's the key part of my business is to get that labor factor down. Is it are we over scheduling at certain times between eight to five? Do we have four people working eight to five, and or do or do we schedule? two people from 8 to 5 and bring two people in from 12 to, to 8. So those are areas where I would like to see their scheduling process and see if we could get that that down. Again, um, it, it's a big part of it and, and if I could look at their scheduling or if we could all look at their scheduling, it might, be, it might add or give us more insight of what's happening. To say to cut hours, that yeah, anybody can cut hours, but if we have Everybody worked from eight to five, and and we all know eight to five doesn't happen anymore, especially in our environment. You know, eight to five, you know, people are working different. People are, you know, their kids are, 
are, are out there at 7 o'clock at night. So I, I just think that we just got to look at it different. And when you get a third party looking at schedules, they might find something more into a schedule than, than just doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, if the increase were to come at 7.7%, it'd be interesting to know if the hours would go back to where they were in 2018 or if they would just maintain the 2019 hours. If it just maintains the 2019 hours, then we have a, to look at um, if it can be done at the 3.5%. If the 7.7 .7 includes bringing it back up to the 2018 hours, well, then we know at half of that it should be able to maintain the hours from 2019, I would think. So maybe we should make that a part of this uh, going back to the library board is um, at what point below the 7.7 .7 is uh, are the hours going to be affected one of the one of the keys I see for our community not only for the library but for every every different part of the organization is what the recreation department does and that that highly utilizes volunteers we've got so many qualified volunteers potential volunteers yeah, and I think that's that's an area that we all have to visit and I think the library should be visiting that we know we've got retired library people out there we know we've got qualified people we know I know that there's a resident who used to be a Brock librarian who's who's out there can, can we touch base with them I mean the, the these people are highly qualified we've got highly qualified residents and I think there's a big opportunity there and we have to visit that oh. May I suggest to council that uh, the actual increase being sought at $62,946 and part of the challenge comes in focusing on the 7.7 .7 number because it's such a relatively small amount of money it looks like a percentage wise it sounds like a large increase. It's actually 62000 or let's call it 63, round up by 50 bucks at 63000 Keep in mind for us, 139,000 is a 1% increase on the tax levy. So this is a just under 0 0.5. Right. So 7.7 .7 becomes 0 0.5 for the larger corporation. That's, and keeping that in mind, given that it's a relatively small, uh, it's a $63,000 ask, perhaps council could consider you know, a number like 50,000, uh, which is material to that ask. There's about 13,000 less. And issues and and then require that the board come back if it, that was going to have any impact on hours of operation otherwise not dictate to the board how it spend its it's asking for sixty three thousand dollars but if it received fifty thousand that's the vast majority of it it is a cut indicating the challenging times we're in uh, and you could require that there be reporting to you directly if that was going to have any impact upon hours of operation um, but that still allows them in the future to work out how to deal with a $13,000 shortfall and would not delay our budget process overall, which I think is the bigger animal and more important to this corporation in a direct sense. Well, I think uh, one thing this council doesn't want to see is any further reductions in Fenwick or in any libraries. So if we are... Uh, uh, what's, what's council think of that then? Uh, uh, do the CAO's recommendations go back with the uh, with the um, fifty three thousand? Maybe fifty even. Yeah, fifty even, uh, and see as to how that affects the uh, library hours negatively. Uh, council, are you? I'm, pre I'm prepared to go to fifty thousand dollars, but but I think w w they they've got to be creative, mm -hmm. and that, that's the key that we're asking for some creativeness in maintaining the hours, and well, I'm prepared to do that. When you see uh, <laughs> what this new technology is doing, surely there's a place halfway between that and, and like you were saying, the use of volunteers. I mean that would get us. Uh, quite a leap uh, if we could have volunteers right. either at the front desk or whatever. I know that uh, we've heard from the library before that <coughs> they don't like using volunteers for privacy issues, but it, it seems to me as if uh, this council 
um, is leaning towards the fact that we use them in every other aspect of the town, like you say, especially in the recreation, and and they're uh, and I'm not not impeding on anybody's privacy at that level. So uh, it's definitely I don't think uh, it's definitely something that again council uh, urges the library to uh, do, and it would be a halfway measure between now and when we do, if we do get the grant. And like I say, and like Councilor Wink says, that is quite an assumption at, at, this, uh, at, at this time. Mm -hmm. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Councilor Wink, have you got any comment on? No, I, I agree with going part way in $50,000 seems like a reasonable cutoff. Um, from my perspective, not sure about the, the library's perspective, but um, to move the process forward, I think it's a good compromise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I Call also agree with that. It works out to a 5.7%, so I can live with that. Councilor um, Sophie? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. We're giving them approximately 80% of their ask, so I'm okay with that, and at the same time, uh, in good faith, I would hope that they can work and try to restore the hours from 2018 with that $50,000 more as they have as well. We're working and we can all meet somewhere in the middle. Okay, thank you. Approximately 80% of their ask. Yeah. Okay, any other discussion on this? No. no? Okay, uh, so then uh, that would be the direction, uh, Madam Treasurer. <coughs> thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, this one, this slide here talks about the 2020 increases. So what are the big increases impacting um, the budget? And we talked about a few things. So one, the first one is um, this is the compliments that we talked about. So addition of a policy planner, uh, full-time bylaw officer, uh, some beautification students, volunteer firefighter points, and the MCC staffing as well as increases for merit, uh, equity, and related benefits. And these are all net of the planning revenue of $75,000 and $135,000 of savings in, in the uh, custodial uh, contracted services, the janitorial services. So the net amount is $167,000 of all that. Uh, increase in benefit costs for the full-time and part-time staff, that's the $58,000. Uh, decrease in the transfer from the MCC, we talked about that, that's the 325500 Increase in the reserve transfers to allow for capital expenditures, almost $357,000. Uh, the additional cost of a four-year operation of a second bus, net of revenues, is $18,733. The full-year debt payments of the 2019 debenture is $181,000. Savings on a hydro at the MCC and also some street lighting savings is 167000 As we're replacing street lights, they're being replaced by LED lights. And we're also going to look at um, potentially with the green grant that was announced today to look at all replacing all the street lights with that grant if it qualifies. So we're going to look at that and they'll have more savings. The library budget increase, we mentioned the 63000 uh, Increased cost of insurance, about 19000 Increased cost of software licenses and support is thirty thousand, and other increased expenses net of revenues is fourteen. So those, that's the total increase, is um, just a little bit over a million dollars. The estimated increase in growth. So this number here is a number that right now, because the budget is coming to council earlier than it normally does, we don't have the exact number. We'll find out by the second week of November, what the actual growth is. So growth is our new property taxes coming to the town. And whatever that growth is, it decreases the amount that we actually have to charge the existing taxpayers. So right now, we base it on the assumption of 1.75%. Uh, we've been averaging, uh, last year was I think 2.02%, about 2%. But it's always safe at this point to be more conservative. And if it comes out higher, then that's better news for everyone. So we'll come back to council before the budget's approved, and we will know that number, and we will update that schedule. But right now, that's what we feel, that we can at least get that much. So 
The total um, operating budget increase is at about 827000 Mind you, that number is going to decrease by almost the 13000 from the library. That number is going to go down once we put that in there. And so what does this mean for our tax levy? So this means that uh, it's a 6.05% tax increase. And looking at that, what does that mean? That means that it's on an average household, $108 per average household. And where does that $108 go to, to fund? This is $108 annual so for the year. And so if you look at that, uh, the key items here, like for example, $36 of that 108 is going to transfer to the reserves for capital. $19 is um, the full year impact of operating the community center. There's some additional increases there. And $18 of that amount is for the full year uh, debt payment on the 2019 debenture. And the other ones are you know, $7, $10, $4, $6. And so that's, we thought it'd be helpful to see in a graph what the $108 is actually purchasing. So excuse me, uh, going back, Councilman Wink, sure. going back to your summary of uh, 2020 increases, um, did you include, and I don't see it in here, the summer uh, bylaw officer? Top line. Yeah, this one here. No, it yeah, says full. Full, says time, full time bylaw yeah. officer. It doesn't say anything about the yeah. oh, the, the student. student. Yeah, no, the student's out. So we're not doing a student this year. I don't think the student's in there. We talked about it. Is it still in the budget, Bob? I believe well, we'd be happy. To, okay. We'll clarify, and, we'll, yes. and if so council wants to indicate 11, something, we'd be happy to add it back in. Eleven thousand dollars for so the summer student. Yeah. It's still there. Uh, that's why I believe it was in there. That's what the figure yeah. was, but I don't. I, we talked about it so much around the table, not one of us recalls the. Uh, look, look at that. <laughs> Everything except the final decision. <laughs> Through you, Mr. Mayor, it is currently in the budget for the okay. student. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And in the budget, might as well poke the bear. Um, I assume that we've got twenty-five thousand dollars as a spend for Gypsy Moth. Yes. What would an additional hundred thousand dollars on top of the twenty-five thousand dollars look like to our budget? So the assumption when we did the budget is we were we kept it at status quo, waiting to hear from council and from the open house on the direction of council how much you wanted to increase. It would be more of the invasive species budget, not just gypsy moth or any other invasive right, species. Right, I understand that. So that right now is at $25,000 at the same level that we have this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, through you, we're definitely going to be in problems. I, I, I don't want to re replay this year. If we don't budget a hundred. Twenty-five or 150 it just and we talked about a reserve for that and if we don't spend the 150 we just put it aside and uh, I, I think it's important and I agree with my colleague Councillor Wink we're just going to go down the same path and uh, we need to be aggressive and show our citizens that we do mean business when it comes with the uh, gypsy moths because I know one thing, last year I didn't know about Gypsy Moth, that's why I passed the 25. This year I do know about Gypsy Moth, and uh, 150 would probably be the number. Councilor, how about that? Mr. Mayor, I, I think we're doing the right thing by having the survey out there, and I think once we get the survey results, I think this, this can be, hopefully we can carry this as an open item till we get the survey results and see what the residents want. And then we'll know for sure what we as a council should be budgeting for Gypsy Moss. That, that would be my recommendation. And, and if we could ask the uh, Director of Public Works, do you uh, have an idea of when that A count survey would be done? Hey, Mr. Mayor, so um, if you recall, council did approve additional funds 
in 2019 right. to be able to go forward with uh, infestation survey. So that RFP is um, has been let out, and we're looking to get competitive bids to retain a consultant to do that uh, infestation survey. Um, we're expecting, we're hoping to have the results back from that by the end of the calendar year, which will determine what the infestation levels are throughout the town of Pelham, um, within the city limits, or sorry, within the town limits. So um, based on that information, then we staff and move forward with an RFP that would uh, develop a spray program. So we're hoping to get some type of idea of what the infestation would be throughout the whole town by the end of this calendar year. So to give an update, we're, we're speaking about budget. So uh, last year, um, in order to fund the program that we that we let out with respect to spraying moderately and severely infested lands, uh, both town-owned and within the urban boundary, the cost for that program was ninety thousand. The cost for a program that included what uh, the urban, sorry, the rural uh, community also spent, it was in the order of $200,000 for everything. Um, as part of our alternatives that were presented on October 23rd, um, we estimate that if we do a complete survey of the entire town and we end up spraying urban and rural, um, that could be upwards of 350000 mm -hmm. So it's kind of ballpark where we are with respect to numbers and um, at this point in time, we have been receiving um, emails from the public following the, 20, the meeting we had on the 23rd. So we're compiling, the staff's compiling those, and we'll be reporting back to council on, on what the preferred option is based on the responses that we're receiving from the people that attended the meeting. We don't have those numbers exactly right. And are we also, uh, uh, Mr. Director, um, the NEC... Uh, uses a lot or puts a lot of weight I believe it's the is it the MNR that does a uh, an aerial survey using uh, infrared uh, are you familiar with that uh, yes uh, you, mr. mayor so <clears throat> the Ministry of Natural Resources does do um, defoliation mapping so we uh, will be receiving that from the MNR and we'll, we will be providing that to our consultant as well to take into consideration uh, when they uh, look at infestation levels throughout the town. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, Council Token. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. So just to clear this up, are we leaving this part of the budget open until we get the results in, or are we going to set a number and then put the rest in reserve if we don't require? Let's say everything's good and we don't have to spray next year, which I doubt, but how are we going to go about this? I don't even see the Gypsy Moth $25,000 because it's, part, it's the same as last year. So this is net change. There's no change. Okay. So, if we, yeah. so that'll be coming up in another slide? No. Yeah, so it was 25000 last year, 25000 this year, waiting to hear from council, and that's why it's not an increase because it's the same amount from last year. So that, that's just showing increases or decreases. Okay. Slide there. So when, I, I, it would be helpful to hear from council. What, what well, we want. talked about this back in uh, August we thought the RFP would have been out at a certain time and we were going to get some results in time for the budget and that's why we hustled. So I understand the RFP went out on Friday and we won't get no results till January so how do we make sure we're clear on this? I just don't want to go through the same thing as last year. Let's spray now we'll sort it out later. Well I think we would have to earmark an amount for the budget. Yeah. That Sorry, that is what I want to say. I, I think we can specifically answer Councillor Wink's question. Someone slightly better at math than I can figure out what 100,000, it's going to be around 0 0.6, 0 0.65, 139 is 1.0, so 100,000, uh, keep looking up someone with a counting designation, but around 0 0.6, 0 0.65 says my mental math, so it'll be somewhere in there. As an increase, to answer your question, sir, and you are, you've found 13,000 towards that 100, that's 87 more as you sit here at the moment. So really 87 is uh, 0.6? 0.76. Well, it would be 100. If, it's, if it was 100. So well, in fact, you need about 87 to answer your question, sir. Uh, so uh, obviously it was, in, it was not appropriate for staff to put a money in place prior to public consultation, prior to hearing the public, and prior to direction from council. So we did not do so to try to allow for that. 
if you do put a placeholder in, that's not the same as making the policy decision as to how we're going to deal with the issue in the future. So you can put a placeholder value in now, and you will still get the report from Mr. Marr at all with the options and indicating where the predominant public feedback was, and that will move your needle to more expensive or less expensive depending on the ultimate policy decision made by this body. But if you bring a motion to increase the amount of money set aside for that, that will give us more options at this point, at that point in time. Uh, so you're looking around 0.7? Is that what you said? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So $100,000 increase would be 0.76%. Well, I think it's probably uh, goes without saying that this council uh, a does not want to go back to where we came from last year, and uh, if that means having to put uh, aside uh, and, and at that meeting, um, whatever like that was Wednesday night, that's what everybody wanted was to uh, spread it out to, uh, to to the town base. So I don't think we'd be out of line here. Um, uh, putting the hundred thousand in, that's for sure. Yes, good council. Yes, Mr. Mayor, when I'm looking at your chart, what is the hundred and eight dollar increase in an average uh, tax paid for? We have ten dollars, right, for new staff, and if we budget one sixty seven, it would be ten dollars per per household. I don't think that number would be too bad. When I'm just looking at the math here, it might not sound right, but if we budget ten dollars per household we could generate $167 and we could put that in, in a budget and if we don't use it, we could use it as a reserve moving forward. Am I making sense here? 500 residences? So that if we no, I'm just going by what her, yes. what her staff is, yeah. what their numbers are. Up on the next screen. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, the hundred thousand dollars. If we have a hundred thousand dollar increase for the gypsy moth or invasive species, and less than thirteen thousand from the library, we're at 063 percent of an increase. So we're at point six of an increase. Yeah, but what what is that going to mean to the household? Five dollars, six dollars, and like I said, if we go to ten dollars, we could put one hundred sixty seven dollars in the 60, in that fund. One hundred sixty seven thousand. And I don't think that number's too far off. Instead of asking residents to pay 260, what we did this year. Oh, I see. Okay. But you've already got twenty five thousand dollars in there. Twenty five thousand already in there. Well, then it'd be eight fifty. Mm -hmm. okay. So, are, are you looking at a hundred thousand dollars more to the to the twenty five? Is that is that what, is that what council's looking at? That's, that's, right. that's what I was looking at. Yeah, that's yes. what I'm thinking. Yeah, hundred thousand. I'm thinking 100. Sorry, three units. I'm thinking 125,000. So that way we're 150 total. Add 125 to the 25. So we're 150. And like I'm saying, hopefully the infestation won't be as bad this year. We don't need it. So that's almost a one percent increase to that slide that I had there. So, uh, so let's go back to the Mr. to the CAO. So Mr. Uh, CAO, we are saying uh, put the hundred thousand in as a placeholder, and and then when we find out what the mapping is, we could then up it. Um, or is it better to just bite off the of one twenty five and? Yeah. Well, the uh, <laughs> keeping in mind how how bad the state of reserves are. Yes. Overall. Yes. If you were to take the decision to add the 125 um, at a future point in time, but this isn't won't be a statutory reserve, right? It's not. There isn't a law saying you have to set aside money for Gypsy Moth. So in the event that we're having a good year in 2020, we only need half as much spraying, a third as much something, and and council makes a decision that the taxpayer will fit the in, foot the entire bill or something similar to that. Uh, with leftover money, you could choose. To keep that in reserve for future infestation, you can choose to move that to a different reserve. That's one you have control over because there isn't a law saying, oh, well, it's locked in related to development charges, for instance, or WSIB or a couple of places where we're not allowed to touch it. This you would have control over. So that can, depending on what policy decision you make, you'd still have freedom to do something else with those monies next year if you needed to. 
Uh, so it gives you decision-making freedom next year for, I have no idea what else might go wrong, <laughs> lacking that crystal ball. Uh, so that's the, but of course, you're talking about a higher tax increase. That's, yeah. you know, everything comes at a cost. Yeah. Um, it doesn't lock you in. I, I guess, the, obviously, the higher the amount, the more options you have next year. But, of course, then it's a higher amount. And so every 1% every, um, of a tax levy, 137000 is approximately $18 to a, a household for the year. Sorry? Uh, yeah. $137,000, okay, yep. is 1% of a tax levy, which is equivalent to about $18 per household. Can you just slide okay. down that yep. on page uh, 12? This one? No, 12. Oh, okay. That'll be the, the next one. Yeah, right. No, no, not that one. This one? That one, yeah. Page 11, sorry, yeah. So line number one. Additional staffing is one hundred sixty-seven thousand and thirty-two dollars. Yes. Right. So then, if we go to the graph, and then we look in the blue, it says ten dollars new staff complements net of revenues. Just, I'm not sure what that means. Right down on the bottom. So does that ten dollars make up the one hundred sixty-seven thousand? Well, I don't think so. No, it's really it is it a combination of a few things? Yeah, the we, could, we could have grouped a couple of accounts together. Um, I think it, it's less than what it should be because if you're saying 137000 works out to $18 per household, 167000 is working out to... Oh, no, because it's a 17. It's the $7 for the staff pay increase plus the 10 for new compliments. That's $17 right, right there. Yeah. The the okay, so they're grouped that way. Oh, so so we, those we are broke grouped. it out on the graph. Okay. That, that, that's more reasonable. Okay. No, now it makes more sense. Thank you. I know, actually, and the, and the benefits, yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's about, so think about that. $137, $137,000, $18. Why do it that way for households? <coughs> so if you're saying $125,000, then maybe it's like $15. I don't know. Okay. That's, uh, mm -hmm. And that would give you, you know, right now we have $25,000. Oh. For you, Mr. Mayor, just to add, that's the average residential assessment. So the average residential assessment is paying approximately $1,779 on their town portion of their municipal tax. That's what this is based on. So some people's assessment is higher, yep. some people's assessment is lower, and it also depends on the rate at which their assessment value is changing over that time. But this gives you an idea of what the impact would be on the average residential assessment. And, and that is the average assessment in this town is 343 or 353? 348, 359. 348. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I think it's just, um, this is more helpful to do it with numbers than percentages. Yes. Well, what's the, uh, what's council want to do? Like you say, if we go to the, uh, uh, you're looking at a 1% increase across the board, if we go to uh, 137. Was the 125 plus the 25, right? So I'm going to be contrary to uh, Councillor Corr and Councillor Chulfi, and I'm still going to stick to the $100,000. And whatever $125,000 will do for spraying, that's what we're doing. If we require more, we're not doing any more. Uh, what does the CEO think of that plan? Uh, so, I, I think council's best served by mentally cutting this debate in two. One is money, and this is an appropriate time to make a financial decision to try to give yourself more options next year. The other is the policy and how, how do we actually proceed. Uh, that's an entirely reasonable statement depending on the level of infestation. That might be a, a completely unreasonable statement depending on, again, level of infestation. So, uh, I. You're not prejudging by setting aside more money. You're, be, you're attempting to be prudent because you have a couple of unknowns, and there's just no way for us to get the information to you until we at least do a survey. Plus, we want to hear the feedback of the residents. And we've put a lot of effort so far into trying to actually listen. We're getting excellent, a large number of email responses. 
I don't know what large is, but I've seen a couple already myself that actually have pretty good thought out suggestions. Uh, so we'd certainly like to allow that process to, to play out. Because um, frankly, I'm, I'm still hoping that the perfect solution's out there and someone just hasn't hit send yet. Um, so, so to answer, you, you, you're maybe identifying a path forward that'll help financially, but that's quite apart from how we <coughs> ought to proceed next year. And you, you should be in a position to tell us, based on a lot of good advice and a lot of public input in January or latest February, how we should proceed next year. And uh, so I just encourage you to try to set, divorce those in your mind, money from policy, uh, and we'll get the two married up eventually, but right now we just, we don't have enough data to do the policy <coughs> I imagine the council's fear is that um, if we don't decide to put the 1% uh, in now, and if the uh, survey comes back that we are going to need it, uh, I guess will we be able to find it? Uh, I mean, we did seem to find a little bit here and a little bit there in this last budget when we needed it. So I guess if we don't put it in, it, we're not going to be able to find it anything. No, I think you, that's that's not a good way to start the budget, assuming you're going to find it. I mean, that's very risky. I would rather you put it in now, and if we don't need it, it stays there in the reserve. And uh, I mean, you want to let it grow, let it grow. But uh, your staff have spent months trying to come up with a budget that reflects the actual cost of yeah. running this corporation. Yeah. No, no number, numbers aren't exaggerated to no. give a lot of fat and insulation. They're also not suppressed to make it seem like we can operate on ten dollars when we actually need fourteen. Mm -hmm. well, this budget has attempt it is an honest attempt to reflect the actual costs. So at this point in time, Ms. Quinlan is one thousand percent correct if that was a mathematical possibility. Um, in that we're we have a, an honest document in front of you and you don't want to assume we'll, we'll be able to find it. I mean, it's possible. You never know how bids come in, et cetera, but we, this is crafted to actually reflect the cost of running the corporation. Yep. Thank you. Council Member. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm, I would suggest that we approve a 1% one, 1 allocation to Gypsy Moss, which is basically a, a total of 137 or 138, whatever that number is. Plus, but then plus the that also includes another 25. No, that includes the 25. Right. For the net of that, so the 137 minus the 25, is that what yep. you're saying? Then we could say that 1% of the tax is pertaining to that? That's right. Okay. Uh, Council. <coughs> yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'd rather have some money there in place because what happened this year was a disaster. But then looking forward, we have to wait for the egg mass count and it, depending on weather conditions and that, it potentially could be lower than we expect. And then it also will be affected by the spring weather. So I would rather have the money in place and then if we end up not having to spend it, we're prepared for the following year. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Council, uh, yes, Council Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I would like to see a total of 150,000 set aside for it. Uh, minus the 25,000 that's already in there, you're only, it's about a 0.8%, 0.9% increase. Because we already have 25,000 allocated. And then if you subtract out the 13,000 from the library allocation, it comes out to $99,000 that we would need. Like 47, 47 minus the 25 minus the 13 is 99,000. Any other? Comments on that? Are we ready as a council to allocate that amount of money and move forward hoping we don't need it, but at least it's there if we do? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can you clarify what the number is now that you're asking us to move forward on? Uh -huh. Can you clarify for us what the number is you want us to move forward on now? 125,000. One twenty-five. I think that was one thirty-seven. You wanted the tax levy increase. Do you want it one twenty-five? I said total of one fifty. Oh. So we already have twenty-five in there. So it'd be one hundred and twenty-seven or one hundred and twenty-five. Oh, okay. Okay. Could be uh, that's different. Nine. Thirteen percent of it. Okay. Or thirteen thousand right. percent. Sorry, I misunderstood you. Any, any 
other discussion or uh, is council ready to move forward on that or is I'm there prepared. any uh, no, it's 150 no. including the 25 that's already there yeah, correct we just need to be clear yeah. correct 12,000 more that's what we need because the net of the 13 so it's 112,000 dollars increase to this budget okay. and that gives you 150,000 dollars for the gypsy moth we can put 100,000 of that in the reserve next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, looks like council is uh, prepared to go with that then, uh, Madam Director. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. That was a good discussion. Uh, the next one is the Meridian Community Center. <coughs> So what we have here is uh, the first column, we have the actuals to August 31st, which we brought that information to council, the 2019 budget, the 2020 proposed budget. And uh, from there you can see there is a slight increase in the revenues for 2020 by $81,000. That's a 9% increase to the activities. Uh, the next section are the expenses. And so, even though you see in the first line, the salary and benefits are up 155,000. If you look down under the uh, contract services janitorial, there's a decrease of 136,000. So that one offsets the other. Uh, we have the big hydro increase, decrease, sorry, the hydro decrease of 142,000. The budget we had last year was 542, and this year is approximately 400,000. Uh, a decrease in natural gas by 30,000 and water by five. I have confirmed those numbers with the Utility Sustainability Committee. There's three numbers. Um, insurance, slight increase in insurance. Um, the bank charges, um, what we're trying to do with the Meridian Community Center is to make sure we allocate all the expenses relating to the center and uh, those would be the active net expenses for the programming that we have. And so if you look at that, sorry Vicki, uh, the total expenditures before debt, uh, the, um, it is a decrease of $69,000, so a net decrease on those expenditure lines. And then there is a, um, it's hard to read there, a net, um, so there's a positive increase of 100 a positive, it's a positive impact of 151000 So that means that the deficit that we would have had, the revenue less expenses has gone down by a, a net of $150,000. And that's just the operations. Now the next section that we have is the part that we show what is the other, the debt activity. So you'll see the, the debt activities on here and also the one-time transfer from the MCC reserve has decreased from 425 to 100. So, and then also there is the, uh, the pre um, Meridian Community Center existing um, recreational staff and facility costs that we had with the old arena. So we're sort of mixing a lot of things in here. We have, you know, the first one showed, okay, what is the actual revenue minus expenses? What does that cost us? But then we, we always had in the budget we had you know, approximately $951,000 of existing expenses to run the old arena. So we're saying, you know, even though um, the Marine Community Center is costing the town a net of $1.1 million, you know, we had $951,000 existing with the old arena. So, so it's important to show that because I don't want people to think that now we have all these additional new costs because of the community center. Um, so there are additional debt costs uh, involved with the interest in the principal, and that's being shown there. Um, so right now, what does it mean? So it means that the net deficit has gone up by 117000 Really, that's a good number because don't forget that 325500 is that reserve that we didn't have this year. So that just shows you the efficiencies uh, that, you know, um, that Vicki and her team have done along with the Utility Sustainability Committee and bringing the cost down, the town is that much further ahead um, by about 150,000 than it would have been. So it's, it's, it's a really good news story. Councilor Park. There's two, on page 
34, and you have a software licensing, licensing and uh, support. We haven't budgeted that in 2018. Why are we budgeting it in 2020? It was previously in the town's budget. So it was the software cost that we had for ActiveNet. Uh, so it was part of the town's budget. We want to show all of the expenses for the community center. Right now, all of the programming that's happening and using the ActiveNet software system for, for registering the programs is the MCC. So we thought it only made sense that we showed the revenues being generated, we should show all the expenses. So this is a more accurate budget. And that comes off the total budget of 195600 from your previous slide on the 29th. Or the page 29. Mm. So I'm not sure which line you're looking at. So slide uh, 29. So it looks like an increase of 30000 It just looks like we are spending another $30,000 yeah. in technology, and it's all going into the MCC. Right. So it's not new, it's just an allocation to reflect that that cost is completely related to the MCC. We should have had it last year to show that, but we didn't. So as we're fine-tuning the budgets, we're making sure that we're capturing all of the MCC costs in there, and that was one that uh, was not allocated, but it was it's not a new cost. We were always paying for the active net fees, and that's the programming that we use to register for programs. Then I'm a little confused, but see, in 2019, we spent 165 with the MCC number in it, and now this year, we're going to 195 with, with a $30,000 increase. Where's the 165? Well, what's the line across? Like, we, we, what's the, the line for the... Okay, I'm just looking at page 29. On your I think 29 is probably a little... No, 29 is not on this one. You don't know oh, I got it. I, I'm sorry. I'm a 104. Ours only goes up to 31 here. I think that's where the confusion is. Well, what's, what's, the, well, what's the name of the... Uh, summary of major expense. Oh, okay. Okay, summary of major expense. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. Summary of major expenses, yeah. Because in 2019, we spent 165000 which you said that the MCC number oh, was okay. in Okay, no, that's different software. That pertains to, I think, Bob's radios. That's brand new. That increase on that page there for the major. No, it's not. Okay, Charlotte, what is it? Okay. So through you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> our software licenses include many things. It includes our recreation software licenses, programs like Adobe, numerous things. So the cost of many of our software licenses have, has gone up this year, including also some of the software that's for um, that's related to the asset management plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Marmac. So the reason for that increase there has to do with those types of licenses. So that cost has gone up. This um, line item is partially part of that number, but it also is going up as we generate more revenue. So our fees for debit and credit software and all of those items, as we're increasing revenue, which is great, we have some increase in expenses. So it's slightly bigger than it was in the past, but for the most part, it's the same as what was there pre-existing. Because the debits would be covered under bank charges, credits and debits, right? So I presume when people pay for rental, they use their debit card or credit card, right? And that's what the $13,500 was for. Okay. And just... And we also pay software licensing fees as well, though, based on the amount of activity that we're running through that software. So that also increases along with the revenue the same way the debit and credit charges do. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. So on page 16, so it says pre-MCC, I think you said that. So the 951000 that was what we budgeted for the Hay Street Arena, correct? I wasn't sure what that pre... Well, it was, um, it's the cost of the recreation, uh, the RCW staff, and the, Hay Street, and the Hay Street Arena. Yes. Okay, and then now with the MCC, we're at 1.1? 1. 1. 
Right. Um, the net amount that's revenue less expenses is a cost of 1.1 million. Yes, that's correct. So would it be fair to say that with this new building, two ice surfaces in the gym, we're paying approximately 150,000 more? Yeah. yeah. The only thing that's different though is the debt that we're, we're carrying, the finance and the debt. Correct. Yeah, I understand that. But if we were just well, right, yeah, so then just look at just look at, look at what you're getting. No, I, I, facilities. I just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. okay. The last slide I have here for the operating budget is the transit. So when we look at the transit, uh, we've got uh, the um, the grants and uh, the second bus. On board that started in the fall of this year. As you know, we had a presentation last week from the Niagara region looking at a different option for the town, a, a partnership with the town, and that would be service and demand. So that's an, um, something that we're going to consider for next year. And uh, right now, what this budget is based on, the current operations, not the new one. But the new one, if we move towards that, uh, the region is aware of, you know, that we have to stay within our budget or less, not more. So they're, they're aware of that. Uh, Council Four. Yeah, so what you're saying is that if we went with the new service, are we going to get rid of the one bus? Or are we going to still have two buses? No, no, we'll get rid of the service. We'll get rid of, get two rid buses. of all, the two buses right. total. And then they'll operate with the smaller buses. Yes. Yeah, we won't have we won't have a bus just following a particular route. We would just have on demand, and they come and pick you up wherever you are. So and it'll that, be an increase in ridership. And, and that will still qualify as for the grant. Uh, right now, we have to um, we'll have to let them know of the change. But uh, Vicky, do you want to talk about that? Sure, through you, Mr. Mayor. We did speak to uh, the MTO actually yesterday, yesterday? Mm -hmm. or Thursday with regard to that, and um, if we decide to, uh, there's a possibility that we will change the type of service that we, we are at now, we will be meeting with MTO and making sure it won't affect our $500,000 grant. And at that time, we'll make sure that council is aware of our outcome, and we'll have to go from there on uh, on whatever they, they uh, tell us. Through you, Mr. Mayor, did we figure out a cost savings? And what is our cost savings by choosing uh, Plan B? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we will know further over the next, I would say, uh, well, over the 14th, the region is going to regional council, and we're hoping that between the 14th and the uh, 28th, 24th, whatever, we will know further on details on um, costs and possible savings or possible greater levels of service. So through you, Mayor, one more question. So we're budgeting a loss of 249000 That likelihood, if we went to this Plan B, that two hundred forty might not get to that point. It could be even less. Through you, Mr. Mayor, we are obviously hoping that it will go less. Perhaps this would be would would be a good time to inform council that, in light of that presentation, uh, we're not currently engaging in the RFP process to replace our existing service for next calendar year. Yes, we have the topic properly raised in the public meeting. Has, has said that we are holding off on um, sending out an RFP on an existing type of service that we have. We are basically running month to month, and we are hoping that as soon as um, that you know, we're looking forward to information coming from the region so that we can process, and then we'll be um, talking to the region with regard to what they can offer through their RFP. And if it doesn't work out for us, we will definitely be going out for an RFP. Because right at the moment, we have two contractors, uh, which is making it uh, extremely uh, challenging 
sometimes. <laughs> so we look forward to uh, having one contractor provide the service. <laughs> Yes, do you, Mr. So if we save $150,000 in the transit budget, could we move that money around, or does it have to stay in the, in the in that budget? No, it's part of the operating budget. You can move it around. So we could move it around, and we can move it to gypsy moths yeah. or yeah. playground it's part equipment. Part of the whole operating budget. Okay. Yeah. Cannabis enforcement. <laughs> That was the operating budget. Now we're going to get to the 2020 water and wastewater budget. So uh, we have a two-tiered system with the Niagara region uh, being responsible for the treatment and the supply of the water. The water wastewater rates, uh, once they're set, they're set, once the region has adopted and approved their rates, uh, the region is proposing right now a net rate increase of 5.15. That hasn't been approved right now. Uh, but our budget is based on that assumption, just from what they have told us. So the water and wastewater rates are charged to users based on fixed costs and consum the consumption usage. The water and wastewater budgets have costs that are approximately 80% fixed. Uh, the town only bills rate payers for approximately 30% fixed for water and 45% fixed for wastewater to ensure that billing increases as consumption increases to encourage encourage conservation. So that's the uh, that was the reasoning behind that. So impacts on the rate setting um, strategy, continued conservation, rainfall throughout the year, that obviously has an impact. If we have a lot of rain, people use less water. Uh, the region's approved rates have an impact on it. The, water, the wastewater flows are based on a three-year rolling average at the region, but built at a water consumption at the town. And we are using the 2018 BMA rate water and wastewater study. So if you recall this year, there was that study that was done when we set the 2019 budget, and we are continuing to use that study to help us set the rates. Uh, for us for this year because what was important in that study is that they also looked at the capital components of our water and our wastewater systems and infrastructure and it ensures that we have enough money that we're generating enough money to uh, take care of the infrastructure so that's very important that you actually generate enough money for that so the uh, the fixed uh, the base fixed rate calculation uh, you have the total water budget, uh, subtract out the fixed costs, and then less any other revenue, then that's the amount of revenue that is required to be paid for by the consumer. So that's how the calculation works. It works backwards. And so the town of Hallam estimates the consumption costs uh, related to water, uh, 1.8 million. We divide it by the projected for water f flows forecast. And then that's the annual consumption rate charge. That's how it's calculated. And then we'll show you some graphs. So on this graph here, the town is green, the region is blue. And uh, this is the consumption on the water. And uh, we ha there have been some issues in the last few years with regards to the region's billing. As you can see that we're, um, the region is billing less to us in consumption as to what we are actually charging the residents. There's something wrong with their meters, which is actually benefiting the town. They're aware of it. They haven't dealt with it. And as far as I'm concerned, that's their issue. So as you can see the difference there. And uh, wastewater rates, uh, same thing. The total wastewater budget is 2.1, less the fixed cost, less any other revenue. That's the revenue that's required for consumption. And this is what the and that amount divided by the forecasted water flows is how we come up with the annual consumption rate that we charge to the residents. And here's the um, the graph. Uh, the town is green. The region's blue. And you can see that. Um, so we're um, the consumption. The, the wastewater is 1.4 cubic. Um, Failed on cubic um, the meters. Cubic meters. Yeah, cubic meters. Sorry, it's been a long night here, um, and ours is at nine hundred ninety-two thousand. 
So this is in your chart that shows you the actual rate increases. And as you can see that uh, what we're recommending, this is exactly what came from the report. We're recommending a, um, an average of an 8.5% increase. What does this mean in comparison to the other residents in the region? So this chart here shows us the 2019 um, water rates across the region for all the different municipalities. The uh, orange line that goes across is the average. That's the average line. And the last two, so the town of Pelham is um, at the second last bar there. And the blue is 2019. We're still the lowest. And even with the increase, this is the increase for 2020, which we haven't seen the increases yet for the other municipalities, we're still at the lowest rate across the region. So that's, that's where we are with that. So the recommendation is to increase the water rate by 7.5% and the wastewater rate by 9.5, which is uh, equivalent to $11.33 per bill or $67.98 per year. And this is based on the average consumption. And that's our recommendation for the water and wastewater. So that, uh, oh, sorry, the actual increase will happen in March because the uh, the billing that we have in January pertains to November and December. So this rate does not become does not is not effective until the March billing. And so the uh, water rate increase of seven point five, that will uh, be the same then for the bulk water carriers. Uh, I think it's almost the same. I mean, um, I don't have the number in front of me, but. I think it's actually lower. Uh, uh, I can get back to you on that. I thought it was usually one or two percent lower for yeah, the bulk. Yeah, it's lower. It's not the same as that. Water Thank you. Right now, it says a seven point five percent increase. Oh, so it, okay, seven point five percent increase. Oh. It was lower before. Okay, well, so it's, but it's still. when we look at the other water haulers, and yes. I, and we're still lower. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that's it. Are there any other questions? Okay. Any questions on this presentation? Thank you for that. Uh, okay, great. Madam Treasurer. That's okay, Bob. You can sit there. I'll, I'll move over here. I'll be, I'll be the fire chief for the rest of the night. Oh, you can. Sure. <laughs> no problem. Okay, Bob. You can have my pager. <laughs> so I have a uh, recommendation put forward by Councillor Stewart. The committee received the presentation from the Treasurer Director of Corporate Services regarding the 2020 operating budget and the 2020 water and wastewater budget and that the 2020 operating budget with an overall estimated increase of 6.05% after growth be recommended for council approval on November 18th, 2019 and that committee recommend an increase in water rate of 7.5% and the wastewater rate by 9.5%. For council approval at their meeting scheduled for November 18th, 2019. Directions given tonight. One, library cap at 50,000 with no impact to hours of operations. And two, Total of 150,000 for gypsy moth spraying in full, including existing 25,000 already included. Any discussion on uh, this recommendation? Councilor Cor. Yes, do you, Mr. Rex? We didn't talk about the chicane on uh, H Street. Is I there believe any... we're waiting for a uh, staff report. Uh, Is that going to be budgeted in and? When is that going to happen? Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor. Uh, staff will be bringing a report forward to Council with respect to the chicane on Hay Street uh, North, as well as um, the recommendation to uh, for a three-way stop controlled intersection at the corner of Brewerton and Haste. Um, that report will be coming to Council for consideration. Um, there has been uh, no money allocated in the operating budget for that. Um, that would be more of a capital And did we have that in the capital budget? I wasn't here. Yep. You, Mr. Mayor, no, there has no, been no direct allocation for uh, improvements for 
for that work. Now, that being said, um, if the uh, if the wish from council is to consider the removal of that chicane, um, then we can look at uh, carrying that as part of or including that as part of our our operating budget for 2020. Okay, great. And and I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite catch when is that report coming to council? To you, Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure the exact date. I was hoping to get it in November, so. It's oh. not November 4th, okay. it's probably November. Okay. Thank you. I don't know the dates off the top of my head. But it'll be November. Great. Okay. Thank you. I've had some uh, phone calls on it myself. Thank you. Well, I'll put a motion that we do uh, remove the chicane from Hay Street. Well, uh, I would. Uh. Sure. To you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, staff will be bringing a report forward with some recommendations to consider for council. And at that time, you. you okay. As a, as, a, as a council, you can make a decision on how we move forward with that. But through you, Mr. Mayor, are we going to have enough money in this budget? Are we going to wait another year to remove that? Or are we going to have enough money in the 2000, or 2020 budget? And Mr. Mayor, um, if it was council's wish to uh, remove that chicane, um, the removal works are fairly minor in nature, and the reinstatements could be performed underneath our uh, capital projects for our patching. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. okay, so we'll uh, anxiously await the report then, uh, Pat Director. Okay, any other questions on this? Um, on this? If not, I'll call a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion recommendation carries. And a uh, motion for forward by Councilor Wink that committee receive report number 2019-0116 corporate services and recommend to council that council adopt the 2020 water and wastewater budgets. Any further discussion? Not seeing any. I'll call the vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion or a um, recommendation put forward by Councillor Hildebrand that this special meeting of committee be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for November 4th, 2019, following council. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carried.